Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all the desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high.
us, O Lord, we pray thee, to trust in thee with all our heart. See that, as thou dost always resist the proud, who confide in their own strength, so thou dost not forsake those who make their boast of thy mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Ezekiel. Thou mortal, I have made a sentinel for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to you the wicked, O oh, wicked ones, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but their blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from their ways, and they do not turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but you have saved your life. Now you mortal, say to the house of Israel, thus you have said, our transgressions and our sins weigh upon us, and we waste away because of them. How then can we live? Say to them, as I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their ways and live, turn back. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? The word of the Lord. Thanks. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law, the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not covet. And any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling, drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. 
Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus said, if another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to you, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. 
For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. You know, I'm not sure I've ever heard anyone preach on this gospel before. We're so uncomfortable with confrontation in this church that we don't even want to preach about it. But as one very familiar with the subject, I figure, who better than me to tackle this thorny issue? The people of St. Paul's, for better or worse, had been brought together by God to, in some way, carry out his work of proclaiming the kingdom. This work requires us to trust one another, to be honest with one another, and to be responsible to and for one another. It's no easy task, but Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. We are the body, but he is the head, nourishing us with exactly what we need to do this, through the words spoken in scripture, through the sacraments, and through the love and fellowship his love stirs among us. Christianity is not just a religion, it's a worldview, the lens through which we see the way we look, the way we interpret everything in the world, it is no less than the way we live every moment of every day of our lives. So in the world, when somebody fails or does something wrong, how do we deal with that? Normally, we look away, or we dismiss them, or we gossip, or we cancel them or we throw them in prison and pretend they don't exist. We treat them as non-people. But Christians can't do that because Christians know that everyone is created in the image and likeness of God and deserves to be treated with dignity and respect regardless of what they may have said or done. And, and this is the kicker, we all fail we all hurt each other, and we all sin. We are told all throughout the scriptures, just go read through any of the epistles, how to behave so that we can remain in community. Jesus says, by this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. We can't be the disciples Jesus calls us to be if we're at odds with each other. We need to protect our relationships, working towards forgiveness and reconciliation when there is conflict. Ezekiel, like all the prophets, was called by God to a particular role, to publicly call out public sin. His motivation was justice for the oppressed. What Jesus is talking about in this gospel is a little different. It's not our role, but our relationship within the body of Christ that gives us the responsibility to call out sin within our community. The motive is injustice. It's love. And the first step, as laid out, is personal and private. So I'm going to give you two examples. Example number one. Let's say... Susie has an issue with Jean. Susie might approach Jean and say, when you said or did X, it hurt my feelings or made me uncomfortable or made me angry. And this makes me not want to be around you. But that's not what I want. I want to be in relationship with you. For example number two, Susie says to Joe, 
I saw you and X. Definitely not Mother Michelle. Together at the park the other day, and I'm concerned. You might think that second example is none of Susie's business, but you'd be wrong. In both cases, the goal is to preserve relationship and to prevent a rupture in the community. It's about loving and trusting the person and the community enough to be honest. Indifference will destroy us as easily as violence. This is not an easy thing for most people, I get it. It requires a lot of trust, love, and courage, which means it should begin with prayer and approach with humility. Sometimes it works right away. In the first example, Jean, who may not even know she'd hurt Susie's feelings, just apologizes immediately, and the two of them become even closer than before. Or in the second, Joe already feels ashamed and guilty, and may even be relieved he's been caught. St. Augustine said that most sins are committed by people weeping and groaning. Of course, sometimes it doesn't work. Maybe either Jean or Joe refuse to listen or deny everything or tell Susie she's crazy. That's when you bring in other people, people who have, may have witnessed something themselves or who simply believe Susie has credibility and are willing to stand with her. The point is we don't give up. It's like a marriage. Sometimes we have to bring in a third party, a therapist, because the relationship is worth fighting for. And if that doesn't work, we bring it to the church. In my first example, that might be the priest. In the second, it, since in this case it involves the priest, it might be the vestry or even the bishop. What we're saying by this, by taking this step is, you hurt me, or I know you're sinning, but I still won't write you off. I will still love you and fight for you, and we are still in this together. As Christians, we are always fighting to see the other as a person, and we're always fighting alongside the person. We fight not to win an argument, but to win the person. Anthony the Great, the famous Desert Father, said, Our life and death is with our neighbor. If we win our brother, we win God. If we cause our brother to stumble, we have sinned against Christ. What happens if we ignore the situation, if we're in, actually indifferent, or simply don't want to get our hands messy? Let's say, hypothetically, there's a bishop who has a drinking problem. Someone notices and approaches that bishop, but he denies it. So a group of people who have witnessed this approach together, but he still denies it, angrily this time. If it doesn't go any further, or if the church itself refuses to address the problem, the whole di diocese eventually becomes dysfunctional like the family of an alcoholic. And the bishop himself slides further down into the abyss. Everybody loses. In scripture, we see the way it should work. We see the disciples correcting each other. In Paul's letter to the Galatians, he speaks of how he had to oppose Peter to his face because Peter was acting hypocritically. One way, oops, the page. one way with the Jews and another way with the Gentiles, which was distorting the truth and the glory of the gospel. And Peter listened. He realized he was wrong and he changed his behavior. And that probably saved the church. In a story a bit closer to home, while I was in seminary in laid back Ruby, California, Berkeley, I was told rather harshly and not till the very end of my first year 
that my manner of speaking was being received by some as aggressive and disrespectful. I was honestly confused at first. Where I grew up and lived most of my life, everyone spoke the way I did. So I went for advice to a priest friend whom I trusted. I trusted him not only because he was my friend, but because although he had lived in Berkeley a long time, he had also spent many years living in New York. So he knew how New Yorkers spoke, and he also knew how Berkeley people heard. And he very gently explained to me that my New York style of communicating, loud, passionate, direct, and opinionated, could easily be received as aggressive and disrespectful in more restrained parts of the country, like Berkeley or the Midwest. And that fair or not, if I wanted to be heard, I needed to learn to speak in a way that people could hear without feeling attacked. I pretty quickly realized that of course he was right, but I was angry and upset that nobody had spoken to me the very first time it came up. How was I to know otherwise? But it took them a whole year. At that point, I didn't know how many people I had allegedly offended, and so I always felt self-conscious, and I pulled away from the community. So seminary was not a fun time for me. Still, I was grateful to finally hear the truth, because I truly didn't want anyone to feel hurt or offended or disrespected by something I said. By the time I graduated, they told me I'd made great progress. But I know that I can still go into New York mode, and I can be guilty of not always speaking with the greatest amount of tact, especially when I feel passionate about something. And I would hope that somebody would follow the dictates of this gospel and tell me, rather than carry a resentment or pull away without affording a chance for reconciliation. Any rupture in the relationship of the community has a ripple effect throughout the whole community. We are called by Jesus and told in our catechism to love one another and to bring each other and the world into unity with God. We have to set the example here in our parishes and in our church. Recognition of harm caused, forgiveness and reconciliation are big issues for the church and for the world. We live in a broken and fragmented world full of self-centered people who have walled up their hearts. The, wall that, the world that Jesus came to love and save through relationship. Addressing wounds and sins is saying, I love you. I want to stay in relationship with you. Only in this do we have the possibility of true unity true love, and true reconciliation. And let's face it, we are all broken. So it's not about pointing a finger, but about being in this together, repenting together, and loving even as we bravely approach or challenge someone. It takes a lot of love and trust to speak up. And it takes a lot of love and trust to listen. But wounds are healed through solidarity. We have to fight for each other. If there is no repentance, we might actually lose a sister or brother or friend or spouse. Of that, Jesus says, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. But let's not forget that Jesus himself spent time with and loved Gentiles and tax collectors. Former Archbishop of Canterbury, Rowan Williams, defines a healthy church as one in which we seek to stay connected with God by seeking to connect others with God, one in which we win God by converting one another and convert one another by our truthful awareness of our frailty. Wherever two or three are gathered, God is there. St. Paul's and the wider church can, 
with a little courage, trust, and humility, and a lot of God's grace, remain and continue to grow even more into a close and loving community, a sign to the world of the kingdom of God. Let us proclaim our faith via the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in thy mercy, Hear our give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Doug, our bishop, and Michelle and Debbie, our priests, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Lord, in thy mercy, and to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joe, our president. Eric, our governor, and Tom, our mayor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Lord, in thy mercy. Yeah. Open, O oh Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. Lord, in thy mercy. Yeah. Yeah. We most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Patty, Mary Jo, Eileen, John, Jack, Tom, Sally, Marilyn, Dan, Baby Humphrey, Anne, Mary, Alda, Gordy,
Tom, Lauren, Barb, and Doris Z, and all immigrants, refugees, and prisoners, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Lord, in thy mercy. We commend to your gracious, gracious care in keeping all the men and women of our armed forces at home and abroad, especially Megan and Carson. Defend them day by day with thy heavenly grace and grant them a sense of thy abiding presence wherever they may be. Lord, in thy mercy. We also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, especially Winnie, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Paul, and all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Lord, in thy mercy. Amen. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, guide the nations of the world into the way of justice and truth, and establish among them that peace which is the fruit of righteousness, that they may become the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, in thy mercy. Amen. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, son of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manful sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We are in spirit and and are heartily sorry for these unseen. The burden of that is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in this life to the honor and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, we would pray for birthdays and anniversaries. I have one birthday listed for this week, and that is Eloise. And we're going to go ahead and pray for last week's as well, which were Francis and Elizabeth. And then I have one very extra special anniversary listed for this week. That's Ed and Doris Zazy, whose anniversary is actually today. They have been married 74 years today. Can you even imagine? So let's pray for, for all of them. Birthdays first. O God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants, Elizabeth, Francis, and Eloise, as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And for Ed and Doris. O God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send, therefore, your blessing upon these, your servants, that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share the peace.
Please be seated. I have just a couple of announcements. If you turn onto your announcement page, which is page seven of your weekly insert, you'll see all of the upcoming events listed there. Please don't forget that this coming Saturday is the Sunflower Fair, which totally blocks up the whole downtown. Uh, we welcome you to come and join us. We're going to be on the tree lawn out there, just enjoying the shade of that beautiful tree and drinking cold water and eating cookies and popcorn. Um, so please join us. Uh, if you want to help, if you still have uh, opportunity to volunteer, Susie Richter, catch her after church today. And do please also remember that the handicap, uh, that the parking lot will be handicap only for that day. And hopefully Sandra will be willing to sit with me early in the morning to ensure um, that, that that's complied with. Um, otherwise, just remember there's a vestry meeting next Sunday, and it does appear that the Requiem Eucharist for Winnie Irick will be on Saturday the 23rd, so that it's a week after the Sunflower Festival. Have I forgotten anything, Susie? She said she's going to. For the Sunflower Fair. Yeah, thank you. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
blessed our Lord, <coughs> who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, <coughs> and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, <coughs> Suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby as one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty, with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. Humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Thank you. 
We do not presume to come to this thy table, a merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. God, which passeth all understanding, keep your heart and mind in the knowledge and the love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.